Hello. In this video, we are going to derive an expression for the expectation value of an operator omega, which we write this way. First, we're going to assume that we can describe a particular state of our system as a linear combination C1 psi 1 plus C2 psi 2, where psi 1 and psi 2 are both eigenfunctions of the operator omega. And we can show that the following way, by showing that if the operator acts on psi 1, we get omega 1 psi 1. So omega 1 is the eigenvalue that goes with eigenfunction psi 1. And if the operator acts upon psi 2, we get back omega 2 times psi 2, showing that psi 2 is an eigenfunction of the operator with the eigenvalue omega 2. An important thing to keep in mind here is that if we take a single measurement, the only possible measurements that we can possibly return would be omega 1 or omega 2 in any particular case. Now, if we take a large number of measurements, we would get a particular average, which would be the expectation value of our operator. So let's see if we can derive an expression for this. Now, by definition, for the particular case we have here, the expectation value is the following integral. It's the integral of psi star times the operator times psi d tau. Okay. So we want to evaluate this particular integral. Now, we already know the value of psi because we've assumed it to be this particular linear combination. Well, what would psi star be? Well, psi star is the complex conjugate. And to do that, we simply replace each of these particular expressions by their complex conjugate. So we have C1 complex conjugate times psi1 star. Now we're assuming that in this case that C1 and C2 could possibly be complex. So when we form the complex conjugate psi star, we need to replace C1 and C2 by their complex conjugates. So we have an expression for psi star. So now we want to write out our integral in detail. So we see this is going to be, simply replace, first we put psi star in as c1 star psi1 star plus c2 star psi2 star. Next, we put the operator in there. So let's write the operator in a different color here, write it omega. And then we put in our expression for psi itself, which we define to be c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2. And then because we have an integral, the volume element is going to be d tau. And we evaluate this particular integral over all space. So the first thing we want to do is use the fact that our operators that we use in quantum mechanics are linear operators. So we're going to make use of the fact that this is a linear operator by having it operate on the operand to the right hand side. What do we get when we do that? Oh, the leftmost part stays exactly the same. So let's just write that out again just to show that that doesn't change for the time being. But now we have our linear operator is going to act on the two functions to the right of it. Now, since we have a linear operator, we can pull the constant through the linear operator. And then the operator is going to act upon psi one. And then again, we can pull the 
constant C2 through the linear operator. And it's going to operate on psi2. Our next technique is to make use of the fact that psi1 and psi2 are eigenfunctions of this particular operator. What that means is when the operator acts upon psi1, what we get back is omega1 times psi1, and we've gotten rid of the operator. That's kind of the key point here. Same thing when the operator acts upon psi2, what we get back is omega2 times psi2, and we've gotten rid of the operator. So let's see what we get when we do that. The leftmost part, continue to write in blue to remind us that we haven't done anything with it yet. So what do we get? Now we're going to write this in different colors to show that we've actually performed this part. So now when psi what um, the operator acts upon psi one, what do we get? Well c1 stays the same, it's just a constant. But now we get omega one times psi one. And similarly, since the operator acts upon psi two, psi two is an eigenfunction, we get back the eigenvalue omega two times psi two. And the beautiful thing about that particular step is that now we've gotten rid of all the operators. And what we're left with is we still have our integral, but we're left with just a series of functions and linear combinations of those functions. In our simplification, we've gotten to this point. The expression in blue is simply psi star. The expression in purple is what used to be omega acting on psi. Now we're going to do two things simultaneously. One is we're going to use the fact that the integral is a linear operator as well. And we're going to use the process known as FOIL. So we're simply going to write each of these expressions out formally as if we're multiplying them. So we have C1 star times C1. We have omega 1 psi 1 star times psi 1 and the detail. So simply we've done the F part of our FOIL. Now we do the outside. So we have C1 star times C2 times omega 2 times psi 1 star times psi 2 d tau. I've rearranged these just so that we keep all the c's to the left hand side to tidy things up. So now we want to do the inside. So we have the integral of c2 star times c1 times omega 1 times psi 2 star times psi 1 d tau. And then last but not least, we're going to do the, the L part of the FOIL, the last. And we have C2 star C2 times omega 2 times psi 2 star times psi 2 d tau. And this looks like a mess, but there's quite a bit that we can get from it. We're going to use two important facts at this point, which we're going to just write out in blue, uh, in green, just to remind ourselves of two important facts. One is that these eigenfunctions are, are normalized. So having normalized eigenfunctions means that psi one star psi one, d tau is equal to one, just as psi two star psi two d tau is equal to one. So that's what we mean by a normalized eigenfunction. The second fact that we're going to use is that when we have eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues, we say that they are orthogonal. And what that means in terms of mathematics is if I have psi one star psi two d tau, this is going to be equal to zero. Since psi one and psi two are eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues, if we take their integral over all space, it's going to be equal to zero. 
Similarly, by the same token, if I write it as psi 2 star psi 1 d tau, this is also equal to 0. So psi 1 and psi 2 are orthogonal to each other. Now, once we make use of that fact, we can simplify our expression up here immediately. We notice we have our psi 1, psi 2 integral multiplied by some constants, but since psi 1, psi 2, the integral of that part is simply 0, this expression immediately goes to 0. By the same token, we have psi 2 star psi 1 in this integral, since those are orthogonal, those immediately go to 0. So what we've done is we've been able to simplify two of the integrals to zero immediately because the eigenfunctions being orthogonal to each other. Similarly, we can make nice use of the fact that psi 1 star psi 1, just this simple part here of the integral, is going to go to 1 because we have a normalized eigenfunction. Similarly, the psi 1 psi 2 d tau part all goes to 1 as well. So when we perform those simplifications, what do we end up with? What we end up with is psi 1 star psi 1 times omega 1 plus psi 2 star psi 2 omega 2. But we can even write this a little more completely in the sense that if even if psi, uh, c1 and c2 are complex, we can write c1 star c1 in the following format. Because we've proven before that when we multiply a complex number times this complex conjugate, we get a value that's non-negative and real. So we can write that simply as c1 squared omega 1 plus c2 squared omega 2. And this will work whether c1 and c2 are complex or if they're real. And this is what we want. Since we know that uh, the eigenvalues that go with the particular eigenfunctions are omega 1 and omega 2, the expectation value, the average value of this operator, the, what the expression we're going to get if we take the average of a very large number of measurements, this is what we're going to get. In the case where we can write psi as a linear combination c1 psi 1 plus c2 psi 2. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.